It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therata, Mary Jo Foley are here. Their analysis of Microsoft's quarterly earnings is coming up. We'll look at the great paint fiasco of 2017. And could it be a Cortana-powered smart thermometer? Hmm. Stay tuned. We'll find out. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Theron and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 528, recorded Wednesday, July 26th, 2017. B is for Brad. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we talk about the latest news from Microsoft. Joining us, gracing us with their presence, the dynamic <laughs> duo of Redmond, Paul Therat from <laughs> Therat.com, the boy wonder of Windows <laughs> journalist, <laughs> and, uh, and with him, the Catwoman of Windows journalist, Mary <laughs> Jo Foley. She's from all about Microsoft.com, ZDNet. And uh, and today we will, we are here to discuss the great paint fiasco. <laughs> but before we do that, we probably should talk about something serious, like yeah. Microsoft's earnings. They had a very nice quarter. Yep. Yes, they had a very nice year. You know, I yep. my, my my takeaway from the earnings was they made so much profit in the quarter mm -hmm. that uh, they could afford to lose one point eight billion dollars on Windows Phone and. Not think a thing of it. <laughs> it wasn't really a loss. It was an investment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Nice. <laughs> but it did take a write-off, I believe, on that investment. Right. It was, yeah. Was that the total amount or was that just year? I mean, that's just like one year of The right total write-off for Windows Phone? Yeah. It was over $10 billion altogether, I yeah, believe. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I was reading the announcement. I guess what they said is that uh, they weren't allowed to take it all at once, so they're spreading it out. Right. Like so the the Windows Phone thing was so big, we now measure everything Microsoft does financially in Nokia's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know? boy. So like an $18.9 billion dollar business is like two Nokia's. <laughs> there was no Yikes. bad news, though, in this earnings announcement, was there? This was all... Gravy, gravy, um, gravy. Yeah, no, I guess I agree with that. No hugely bad news, although I think some people were surprised about Surface again it was in this down quarter. Again, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, was I wasn't that surprised. surprised. How do you explain I wasn't it? because, no, I, I wasn't because they introduced the two new device device types, the Surface Pro and the Surface mm -hmm. Laptop, right at the end of that quarter. Uh, that's why I wasn't. Yeah, but surprised. you know, I uh, remember they took a they they had a drop off last quarter, and my theory mm -hmm. at that time was they uh, misestimated the right time to deliver the new, new Surface mm -hmm. Pro by one quarter. Yeah. And um, it's interesting that they released this new product, the Surface Laptop, and the Surface Pro. But like you said, it was late in the quarter. But it seems like mm -hmm. there was so much built up demand that they mm -hmm. still should have been pretty big. So I guess, you know, we'll see what happens in the current quarter. Yeah. I, I think the supply is an issue too, though, right? Because they, yeah. I think ever since they had to write off um, the Surface RTs, they're cautious when they introduce well, a new product. Yeah, they are. You're right. And we saw that with the Surface laptop where you could only get the yeah. colors and what were probably going to be the most popular configurations right away. But on right. the other hand, the, the one of the bigger changes in the Surface business, if you look at these two devices versus say, Surface Book and Surface Pro 4 when they launched almost two years ago, mm -hmm. is that they're launching worldwide now in tens right. of uh, markets, like mm -hmm. in, I don't remember the exact number, 40-something markets or somewhere mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mm -hmm. remember the number, but many markets. You know, it's not U.S., Canada, and one other place. It's They are worldwide, uh, too. Yeah. So I don't know if that spreads out the allotment even, you know, more thinly. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But they had a bang-up quarter for the cloud stuff, for sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yep. that's kind of what I took away was they're they're moving yeah. in the right direction. I mean, their business is moving yeah. in the in the growth. Although, I, so um, as I do so often to Mary Jo, um, it would have been <laughs> Friday morning. I I, I yeah. go back and I go over the conference call from the night before. I, I read through it, 
I start taking notes and I try to understand where these numbers come from. And, and we've talked in the past about how Microsoft will kind of cherry pick numbers in each of their quarterly earnings announcement to show the things that, you know, have big numbers. But the, the things they compare those numbers to are often non-verifiable. And, you know, the service right. business grew 53% or some number well, for, compared to what? They never said what it was before. Mm -hmm. So um, the big number from this uh, earnings report was the, how, let me see, I'm trying to find the exact uh, phrase. The, um, the It's the annual run rate for its mm -hmm. commercial cloud business. Now, <laughs> I, it's funny. I, this is where I bothered Mary Jo because I think, I think I went back to her again and I think 117 times I, I have asked the follow-up questions because <laughs> both of the, these things, the, the name commercial cloud business and the number they came up with, which is the 18.9 billion annual run rate, are both completely made up. <laughs> they don't exist. <laughs> um, what I mean by that is Microsoft doesn't have something called a commercial cloud business. Um, what they do is they have four primary business units. Uh, the things that make up this made up term uh, are kind of cherry picked from the various parts of those other uh, of those actual businesses. They never provide a number uh, for any of them. So you can't add them up and arrive at eight point. Well, it's actually one quarter of 18.9 billion, but we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> and uh, remember, the goal was and I, I, I thought it was last year, but it was actually two years ago. Microsoft said that by the end of fiscal year 2018, which is next June, they will reach a $20 billion annual run rate. So the thing that's interesting about this, now I'm not a financial expert. In fact, I'm not really an expert at most things, but what they mean by that is that in to reach that number, what you have to do is come up with $5 billion in any one quarter, because what you're doing is annualizing the quarter, meaning you multiply it by four. If if we did this business four times in a row, that would be twenty billion dollars in real money, yeah. I guess. So yeah. <laughs> what they've done is they almost did it, right? They almost hit it this past quarter. They'll almost yeah. certainly hit it this coming the, the current quarter, right? So we can agree to that. Yeah. But as to what this thing is, it's the most crazy, made up, nebulous <laughs> thing in the history of financial it is. reporting. They, they've you cherry picked. Take a stab at it. <laughs> yeah, you have a, you have a list of what those businesses are. Yeah, no one so, has a list of what the numbers are. No, it, correct. It's so, crazy. this thing they call the commercial cloud. What's in this? Azure is in this. Office three sixty five business, but not consumer, is in this. Yep. Yep. Um, Dynamics three sixty five is in this. Enterprise mobility plus security suite is in this. Then there are a few other. Um, random services that are in there like Power BI. Um, like Paul said, we don't know what any one of those things is contributing Not to this one. number. The closest one we kind of know is Office 365 because um, we know um, as of the spring, they were at 100 million seats at, or as, yeah. or is it active monthly users for that? Yep. So we kind of can figure from that that the biggest piece of the commercial cloud is Office 365. I think everybody pretty much agrees to that. The question is how big on, is it? Like what's the on average monthly cost of a, a commercial Office 365 subscription? And also on how many users they have. Like the they yep. at least talk about users with that. They don't really talk about users with the other things in this bucket, right? <laughs> like you don't ever hear them say, we have X number of Azure active monthly yeah, right. developers or users, right? So and yeah, so we don't why, so why, you know so I've seen people guess. <laughs> well, what, I think the, the reason they do this one reason is they don't want to be compared to AWS, right? Um and we, like AWS, you know how much the business they're doing and and you have a very good mm -hmm. feel for how big that business is. I forget what their last number was for well, that. Because but, by the way, they state it explicitly every right, single they quarter. Do. They actually they tell you how it, much money it makes. Was it like twelve billion last quarter or something yeah. close to that? Well, like I'm a, just that's pulling a that number out. Forty-eight billion dollar annualized run rate. Yeah. <laughs> using yeah. Microsoft I, I mean, math. I may be wrong on that. I but I I number. believe people who have estimated what Azure may be contributing to this number from Microsoft are guessing three billion. So out of the eighteen billion, people are thinking Azure is about three billion, but Microsoft has never confirmed that number. So that's one reason they don't break it out for sure. Right. Um, uh, you know, and then you're, 
the things that some people wonder is, so will this be in it? Like I thought LinkedIn would be in this, right? I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, they have a lot of services. Are these services part of the commercial cloud? And the answer is no, which is very interesting. Not at all. Because they, actually one of, one of my nope. other questions was whether some of these businesses, for lack of a better term, products, services, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them, might be partially included in this number because you could look at any – well, not mm -hmm. any of them, but you could look at a bunch of them and say, well, you know, some X percentage using whatever <laughs> logic or math yeah. would qualify for commercial cloud and yep. the other percentage doesn't, you know. So you're saying right. none of LinkedIn does. None of LinkedIn because LinkedIn is counted under enterprise services, which is not included in the commercial cloud. <laughs> I know. Crazy. The other, and what you just said is right. Like some services going forward are going to be partially in the commercial cloud and partially not. An example of this is Microsoft 365. So Microsoft 365 is Windows as a subscription. It's Office 365 and it's EMS, the Enterprise Mobility Suite. The latter two things will be in the commercial cloud. Windows will not. So we know that Microsoft's about to redo how they report Windows numbers, yeah. and they're going to be talking to Wall Street about that in August. So it's going to be interesting to see how they start changing the way they talk about Windows numbers. I'm uh, moving. fascinated by this, by the way, because in the past, <laughs> Microsoft has done this several times, uh, yeah. changed the way that they report something. Um, yeah. There's a reason that they do this, and it's not the reason they state. I, I actually believe they do this so that you can't compare the present with the past and that it makes the most sense to change accounting principles for a product line that is in decline. You know, that um, yeah. we right now can't really easily compare most things actually at Microsoft. It used to be very easy. Server was some percentage and some dollar amount revenue and income. Yeah. Windows client was, um, Office was, you know, on, on mm -hmm. and on we go. Those yeah. things have all been sucked into these kind of nebulous <laughs> business units Buckets. and are, yeah. of course, being transformed <laughs> into cloud services as part mm -hmm. of Microsoft's ongoing digital transformation. Everybody drink. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's crazy. I know. I know. I think. But they're doing, you know, people always say like, okay, why doesn't Wall Street ever ask them about Windows, right? The reason right. is Wall Street wants to see Microsoft transform its business and the way they want them to transform it is to become a cloud company and not be the windows company anymore so when you when you talk to a lot of wall street analysts all they want to talk to you about is the cloud right like how are they doing in azure like what's going on with office 365 they never say to you how's the windows business going because they see it as a dying <laughs> legacy business right yeah uh, well even I mean though even though last quarter the biggest contributor to microsoft revenues was but not income more personal computing. Right. But I, I, I've described that business unit as um, Microsoft's version of the island of misfit toys. It's literally <laughs> everything they don't want to talk about jumbled together into one thing. Yeah. And so we right. really don't have any idea what percentage of that business Windows is. Although I, I, looking at what's in there, you could make the case it's probably the biggest, Most. if not, you know, maybe one of the yeah. biggest. Um, right. Right. But like Xbox is in there, right? HoloLens is yeah, in there. Yeah. Um, Surface is in there. There's not, a lot of stuff in None of those are that. huge yeah. revenue generators, right? I mean, right. Surface, a little bit, you know, Xbox, yeah. a little bit. Windows, you know, there's some ongoing licensing there. It's it's a bit, you know, there are a billion users out there at least of Windows. It's, yeah. um, it's still a thing. But, mm -hmm. you know, uh, frankly, this is a product that is essentially in maintenance mode. It should be. It's legacy code. It's... Yep. It's not the hot new thing. It's not cloud services. It's not what Microsoft sees or what it, Wall Street sees as the future of the company. Yeah. But for the three months ended the latest quarter, it mm -hmm. was more personal computing was even bigger than the office division in terms yeah, of but just if you revenues, look at not net not income, income. It's right. a different right. story. It yeah. is. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, it was an. It's hardware based. Yes. Yes. You and know, I it, think, you know, it's. Yeah. They're going, they're going the way they need to go and what Wall Street wants to see them do, right? Which is go subscriptions, go cloud, but, you know, become that company. Th this, this creates kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? It, it, it's not this dramatic, but, you know, back, I, I compare everything to Apple because obviously Apple is the be and all in the end, all the nexus of our lives. But, you know, when you think about their transition <laughs> from the, I know, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> from the Apple II to the Mac in the 1980s, for example. It was a long period of time where the, the Apple II was what generated all of their revenues. And mm -hmm. the, yet they paid no attention to it at all because they wanted to focus on the Mac because the Mac was the next big thing. You know, the world could have been a different place if they had decided to do what we did in the PC world, which was transform this text-based thing into a, yeah. a GUI and, you know, turn that into the operating system instead of coming up with something new. But when, when you focus on the thing that's not making any money instead of the thing that is, I mean, eventually that will become the thing that makes money. There's no, you know, and the thing that was making money is not. I mean, you, it, it's sort of, yeah. you're sort of ensuring that this is what happens. And when this is all that anyone wants to talk about, um, you know, that thing that I happen to care about the most, you know, Windows on the client, <laughs> is yeah. de-emphasized everywhere. And it's just, it's a mm. self-replicating, it's just kind of, it, it just never stops. Yeah. Aren't you glad we're called Windows Weekly? <laughs> it, was an, it was an awesome forward. Azure like, Weekly, the new it. show next week. <laughs> Hadoop Container Weekly was weekly. already taken. Container Weekly. <laughs> Azure instances daily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else? But what anyway, else yeah, learn? they had a good quarter. Um, yeah. They're going the way Wall Street wants them to go. Surface was down, but I think Surface is uh, it's a lost leader anyway, right? It's I mean, yeah, kind and of that's now. part of the reason. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's I the mean, new Windows. I bet next quarter um, will be great for but, Surface. Yeah, I think they're going to be so very too, careful not to be a competitor to the OEMs. The OEMs, OEMs are really yep. important, right? Yes, so true. it's yeah, not yeah. the end of the world if Surface isn't a big bestseller. It's just pointing the way for people. Yeah. Sure. And frankly, I you know I think I got a better value and better hardware from another company than I would have gotten from Microsoft. Oh, you totally did. And and by the way, you know um, it's interesting because uh, there are two issues over the past week. They, they aren't really localized to the past week, but they just happened to come up this past week that are very related in the sense that it's this kind of perception thing overtaking reality. You know. Uh, Microsoft is becoming the cloud business, thus we only talk about cloud. And the other one is this notion that Microsoft is leading by design somehow in the PC business. And that takes two forms. They're out designing Apple, which we could debate about, and, and they're leading the way for the rest of the PC industry, which frankly I don't think we can debate because um, no offense to Microsoft, which just shipped a laptop with a USB 3 port on it, but the rest of the industry has actually been innovating in the PC space for years, and it's a little unfair to those companies, Dell, Lenovo, HP, especially, uh, and many others, you know, LG with that li really mm -hmm. super lightweight gram. I mean, you could go down the list, Asus, Acer, whatever. Um, you know, they don't all just put up boring beige boxes. It's not, you know, 1998 yeah. anymore. Uh, Microsoft wasn't the first to do that stuff. And like Leo just implied, you know, categorically, they're not necessarily the best either. If the best is um, best design, best value, best feature set, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Imagine if Apple, because again, be all end all nexus of our lives. If <laughs> Apple in 2017 had put out something called the Mac laptop that had no USB-C Thunderbolt 3 port on it, that only had USB 3, that had, you know, minimal ports, because that's something Apple would do. We would, st we would never stop making fun of that. Never stop making fun of it. <laughs> um, we are celebrating Microsoft for doing that. And I don't understand it. Um, I, I, I have a problem with this. I don't, you know, we're, we're so caught up in the cloud of, we have to believe that they are innovating and designing and being awesome. And if you just look at the reality, what this thing is, it does, and it, not to mention windows 10 S, which is yeah. a comedy show in the making. Um, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. So anyway, I, it's, it's weird. Microsoft is getting something it had never gotten its entire history, at least not while I've been writing about the company, which mm -hmm. is the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> you know, yeah, it really is point. kind of yeah. amazing. We've stopped being critical of things that are wrong. Yeah. It, it's, it's interesting. It's kind of how yeah. Apple always was. Yeah. We can root for Microsoft without... Uh... Yeah. I'm, sure. I'm happy no, I, By the way, I, I, you know what? when they get it right... I'm, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I'm Absolutely. really happy they, even though I have not yet found the surface that's perfect for me, I am really happy they did surface because I feel like it did spur OEMs to up their game. And I think that yes. that was good. Because if you look at the crop of 2017 laptops, there's it's fantastic. There's some great the diversity, ones. Diversity, yes. <laughs> the choice that consumers have, yeah. the price range. I, 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 there is a visibility that Microsoft gets that uh, maybe to the average person an HP or Lenovo wouldn't get, despite the fact that they sell 
between them, probably 60% of all the computers that are sold in the world, uh, whatever the number is. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that might be part mm -hmm. of it, you know, because the truth mm -hmm. is, objectively, if you look at what they've done with Surface, I don't know. I mean, what, weren't uh, they the first to really uh, do all touch machines? Mm -hmm. I mean, remember, for a long time, Windows 8 uh, machines were coming out without touch. Sure. Yeah, no, they spurred that. Yeah. But, I mean, again, but Windows 8 was uniquely unsuitable as a PC right. operating system as well, as originally delivered. Um, but, you know, when you think about things like premium PCs, we, we, you, I think you were just talking about Lenovo devices. You know, the ThinkPad X series has been around forever. In fact, I had one in 2008 or yeah. whatever. It was beautiful. Um, they've had premium, beautiful computers for a long time. HP has been on a comeback greatest hits tour since about HP's I don't completely know, 10 years now or five, you know, eight yeah. years, whatever. Yeah. Um, those machines are incredible. Yeah. Uh, mm. Dell XPS. Yeah. There's some real innovation there with these kind of bezel-less designs, infinity displays, whatever they're calling them. Did you see the new um, you, uh, HP all in one and the new, and the Dell all in one. Yeah. I mean, there's some, yeah. Yeah. those are really some nice hardware out there. Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, I'm not, I don't mean to say Microsoft has done nothing. I'm just saying it, we're going a little overboard here. Um, in our praise it's of this company. been going on all along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the improvement yeah. in, in PCs and so forth, yeah. In fact, right. one of the reasons I, think... I like Lenovo's is because they're kind of throwback. They, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like PCs like they yeah. used to be with real yeah. keyboards you know, and stuff. I, I right. said this to Paul today. I'm like, you know, I think part of the reason you're seeing all this, like, Surface is killing Apple, blah, 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 is because a lot of these tech reporters who are Apple users – are right. now finally trying a Windows PC, and they haven't yeah. tried one in a they while. They have no right? idea what's going on in this business. No. They have no idea. I think idea. that's my guess, what's happening, because I'm like, of course, like most of them have never tried these other really nice PCs we're yeah. talking about. And Microsoft, smartly, is getting surfaces in their hands. So they're like, and whoa, this, whoa, yeah, this right? Is, um, <laughs> More of an example, I would say, of Apple screwing up than it is of Microsoft or anyone else getting it right. You know, these guys, the, the guys who we see who are reporters, often will have MacBook Airs. This is yeah. kind of a tired design at this point. They haven't upgraded the, the hardware design since the yeah. second gen MacBook Air, which came out in, what, 2010, maybe? It was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, you know, and the new uh, MacBooks, which are kind of pushing Apple's, you know, really mobile centric viewpoint have been found to be unacceptable to a lot of people for whatever reason. One USB port on the little MacBook, and then I think the big MacBook Pros cost about $13,000 or something. I don't really know. But they're they're super expensive, and they have weird keyboards and giant click pads and touch bars and goofy. You know, they're goofy. I mean, people are kind of having a reaction after years of just yeah. Apple kind of ignoring this market, I think. And it's like, oh, look, there's this other thing over there. Yeah, this other thing is what eighty-five percent of the world uses. <laughs> you know, it's not yeah. like it's not like you, you've discovered the hidden island with dinosaurs on it. This is the entire planet. <laughs> um, it's really strange to me. Yeah, you're gonna have to get the gong out today, Mary Jo. I can feel how this. I've got it. Mood. Oh, it is right <laughs> here. <laughs> it's at it. the ready. When I saw the show notes like taking shape, I'm like, the gong uh, is going to be used. Need the today. gong. Need the gong. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I'm trying to think of anything else that we learned in the on the earnings. earnings. Um, they don't break mm -hmm. out enough stuff to really. Uh, know, I know. You know how things. No. Are. Xbox uh, did okay, right? Well, yeah, but the hardware business <laughs> continues to falter, right? Okay. Which is kind of mm -hmm. the issue, and this is why with the Xbox, they're you know on the one hand, I will say their decision to make Xbox mean more than the console was very smart, and uh, it helps turn this platform into something even better for its fans, to be honest. It's kind of a win-win in that sense. Uh, but they turn to those kind of squishy metrics, like um, uh, how many hours people spend on the service or how many active users they have at any given time in a quarter or something. A number which you know, has gone up a little bit year over year, but by the way, has gone down actually month over month. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to the Xbox One X because ob obviously the next one is, ob is always the one that's going to save the business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yep. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, they roll the business into uh, like consumer services, right? So it's all. It's all. Well, it's in with it's with search. Windows. It's with 
Yeah. Phone. Oh, well, phone's gone. Sorry. Just kidding. It's no phone. Right. Um, yeah. So <laughs> phone is, so phone is finally gone, right? Like that's, yeah. I think they are done losing money on phone and they're done. <laughs> the, the, the language they <laughs> use to describe this party. is so, We're done losing money. I know. Yeah, it's, well, yeah. by the way, there was a goofy thing like just, um, just by having that business, they had huge expenses. And so actually Microsoft realized a one-time $1.8 billion tax benefit related to the fact that they did, in fact, get right. rid of the phone business. And that impacted their revenues in a material way Right. Uh, this quarter, unlike phone yeah. revenues, which, as Microsoft said, never, never were anything. immaterial. <laughs> immaterial. <laughs> immaterial. <Yeah. laughs> I looked that up. It's yeah. the opposite of material. Immaterial. <laughs> it means non-material. I like that word. Yeah. Yeah. Immaterial. Oh, well. That's immaterial, Paul. I, that's right. <laughs> the point is moot. It's moot. Uh, all right. Want to move on to the great paint fiasco of 2017. Oh, you know, man. Speaking of gongable moments. Sounds like yes. you hired a monkey to paint the house in Dedham. <laughs> Let me briefly describe how my weekends go. <laughs> um, on Saturday and Sunday, I will sit down in front of my computer in the morning, see what's going on. And I... I have a rough goal to write one thing if I can. If there's more going on, I'll write more. But I like to write, I like to at least bang out one article. One thing a and day. And then, yeah, just so I can, you know, feel okay about the day. <laughs> so <laughs> on one of those days, I think it was Saturday, I guess it doesn't matter which day it was, but um, Microsoft had posted a support document listing the technologies that they were going to deprecate and remove in the fall creators update for Windows 10. Mm. And there is nothing dramatic in this list. Um, but the three deprecated features, I think, are the most interesting three. Um, system image backup, which was a feature of Windows Backup, uh, which is still available if you really look for it. Um, it, it in, hasn't changed since Windows 7. Shouldn't use it uh, anymore. It's not a modern thing. We don't need it today. Oh, but, I've been you know, using it. Yeah, so I was going to say, well, okay. So the way I was just going to say it, it was, you know, there are certain uh, old school people who like to, you know, still. Well, should I go out and buy a third party? Uh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. So the way Microsoft has at least still modernized this part of Windows. lying around somewhere. No, but, geez, <laughs> no. I'd rather have you use Linux yet. than use Ghost. No, um, you don't really need it anymore, right? It's. Um, they have recovery tools in Windows that can restore it to the way that the PC maker presented it in the beginning. They can restore it to the way that Microsoft envisioned it without any of the PC maker stuff built into it. You can sync all of your documents and your important files and your settings to the cloud. You can get back up and running with a clean version of Windows better and more efficiently not using system image backup than you can using this technology. Well, so um, they're deprecating that. Anyway, what that means is uh, it's still there. But they're not updating it anymore. And in the future, they'll probably get rid of it. But they, they're not promising when they'll do that. But just so you know, it, someday in the future. Um, sync your settings was deprecated. That's very interesting. I just, just I just talked about that feature. That's a big part of Windows 10. Mm -hmm. um, it's the current sync your settings technology that's deprecated. The way this has worked so far is that the consumer version of the product, of the feature, I guess, is not the same as what they use in the enterprise, which is called enterprise uh, state roaming. It used to be... Back in the day, this started as part of MDOP, if I'm not mistaken. They brought it into Windows proper. Now they're going to use that as the basis for all um, setting sync between cons for consumers and for business users. So that will change in the future. But functionally, it will continue, obviously. They're not going to get rid of the feature. They're getting rid of how it, you know the technology. But then the third one was one that's dear, near and dear to my heart, Microsoft Paint. Uh, as I often say, I use Microsoft Paint every single day. It's so near and dear to Mary Jo's heart, she was thinking of moving <laughs> to Linux. No, yeah. well, that, I just well, got scared for Notepad. She hears that and <laughs> she thinks Notepad's, Notepad's next. next. And that's not a bad thought. I mean, Do we honestly, still have Minesweeper? Is that. Minesweeper still there? <laughs> yeah, Minesweeper's still there. Oh, that, remember, solitaire. that was modernized yeah. Um, years, yeah. Ago. Yeah. Yeah. years ago. Years <laughs> ago. <laughs> well, well, I think it missed the time, frame, if I'm not mistaken. But whenever, at some point, it was modernized. Um, anyway, uh, they've been talking about doing this for a long time. In fact, remember, they tried to do this, I think, in the anniversary update or maybe the creators update, one of those two releases, where if you tried to run paint in the Windows Insider preview, you would get 3D paint, not Microsoft paint. Right. Um, and they, there was one build where you, I don't think you could even get to paint or they made it very hard. So many people complain they put paint back. Both of the paints are in there now. And whatever. And so but there it is. It's in the list. And so people are freaking out. And 
Uh, I'll let Mary Jo describe the controversy. I think I've talked for about two hours there, but no. I, that's no. The I think of, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah, it was frustrating because you would see all the headlines going by. Like it was on Fox News, it was on the BBC, yeah. it was like on ABC, it was everywhere. And you, uh, the headline was "Paint is dead." Yeah. Um, and it's like, but no, it's not. <laughs> So that that was tough because then you're out there spending your whole day saying to people, it's actually not dead. See the see Microsoft's word deprecated. See they even define what yeah, is deprecated. You know, use a dictionary <laughs> and find out what this word means. I, I yeah, spent but, so I like. But I, they I even said it. I, well, it's I, like, I, it's look okay. to me. This is plain English, but I I, I thought so yeah. little of this. I, I, and of course, I don't write clickbait headlines, so. No, um, well, you know, I didn't write a headline start. in bold move. Microsoft <laughs> kills, my, you know, Microsoft Paint in front no, of its family no. or whatever. Like, yeah. I don't understand the headlines. Right. Um, so on Monday, I started getting email from people and they were hitting me up on Twitter. Did you see this? And it's like the story right. in, in Fox News or CNN or the yeah. um, the Guardian, the BBC, whatever. It was everywhere. I know. Dedham Times wrote a story about it probably. <laughs> you know, Microsoft is killing paint. And it's like, guys, I wrote about this on Saturday. But, of course, they didn't see it because my article, yeah. because common sense logic, Microsoft is deprecating and removing legacy features in the Fall Creators Update. How exciting am I? I didn't think to, you know, so promote what, it like a like a major life event. What, is they, what does it mean, deprecate? It means they're no longer updating it okay. or adding new features to it. But it doesn't mean it's And it's, it's just not kind of sitting there like a vestigial tail on a whale or something like that. And it's not <laughs> going to be in right. installed anymore, right? You have to download it. For no, no, it's installed. It is going to be installed. It's in there. Yeah. It's in It's in the Fall Creators Update. It's always yeah. been there. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, they reserve the right at some point in the future to get rid of it. It's the beginning you know? of the end, yeah. not the end. Right. Just the well, beginning it's, of it's, the end. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. Windows Media Center was stuck around for... Right eight years before yeah. they finally killed right. it. could be there for a while. Look, one yeah. of the things that Microsoft doesn't do because they're always looking at the, you know, splashy new features is kind of take stock of Windows as it is now right. and address some of the foundational yeah. issues that it has. Mm -hmm. How about the file system? How about File Explorer? How about, right. you know, the how about the bugs that are in there that have been in there forever, like the copy and paste bug that makes me insane every day? You know, yeah. um, the, the notion that they would take the time or effort to get rid of paint and not fix things that are really wrong with Windows is kind of crazy to me. I mean, I, I think there's a conversation to be had that Microsoft needs to kind of finish the job on Windows 10, if you will, m and modernize parts of the OS that need to be modernized and stop worrying about flashy new features that few people are going to use. Like paint. Um, well, <laughs> but, but part of that is, is there a common sense way to take the things that have been Windows for a long time and bring them forward. And so actually, in, in my story about this very event, if I could ever bring it up, um, mm -hmm. I had written that I had I have this idea in the back of my head about how Microsoft might want to, um, you know, kind of preserve the past, but do it in a way that's safe and reliable and so forth. And I was going to write about this in a future editorial. So, of course, what Microsoft does is they come out after the whole world freaks out. <laughs> they come out with a post where like, yeah, we're not killing paint. Just kidding. Sorry about that. Um, mm -hmm. in the future, if we do get rid of it, maybe we'll put it in the store, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, okay, that was actually one of my ideas that <laughs> it, you, if you think about all the legacy stuff that's in windows from an end user application standpoint, one of the smart approaches you could do would be to take those things, put them in a UWB container and just put them in the store, yeah. right? They, they're, they're yeah. safe. They're in a container. Um, they don't ever have to be updated again. They could just sit there and if you want them, you can have them. Is that was actually an idea I had. Paint is Win32, I would presume. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's really, I mean, they should get rid of all Win32 stuff. That's exactly right. And yeah. by the way, I wrote that Put editorial. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yep. Yeah. But the yeah. frustrating, again, the frustrating part of this was when Microsoft did come out and say, oh, wow, you guys, you didn't understand our meaning it was like, wait, you didn't say this, though. You you never said that you were going to keep it around. You just said deprecated. And they acted like people had misinterpreted what they said. But they never did say they were going to put paint in the store until Monday right. or Tuesday yeah, yeah. after this happened, not, right? That word does not mean what I th what you think it means. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. As I often yeah. say to anything that is not ironic, <laughs> I'll start the sentence off with ironically. Isn't <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. ironic? Don't you think? Yeah. Uh, I don't okay. know. So I just, no I was like, wow. Yeah. It did kind of <laughs> make sense because they have this paint 3D that 
Aren't, yeah. well, aren't that, most of the features of Paint in Paint 3D? No, they are not. not. No. <laughs> that, that's the problem. You know, that's one of the problems. Forgive me. Because Look, there you are know, alternatives to Paint, like Paint.net, that are fantastic. Yeah. Um, right. but, but, you know, it's like the no problem, pad, right? It is. It's, and the it's, problem it's here, again. It works. Right. And sometimes you I mean, just want sure. the simple thing, right? And you don't need you don't need something yeah. with this huge new UI where you can do all these 3D things. Right. And it's like, I just want to, like, put crop a screenshot and paint, you know? Right. I do this every day. I use it every day. It's wonderful for certain things. It is yeah. wonderful. It's the most efficient way to do certain things. It's not yeah. just that I'm familiar with it because I literally spend a lot of time searching for replacements for the things that I use every day because I want the way I do things to be the most efficient way possible. I've looked at paint.net many times. Um, yeah. I've looked at, I've used the GIMP and tried to see if that could do it or even little like tools like Snagit or uh, if yeah. could the snippet tool, you know, uh, provide some of these, uh, you know, the functions. I, I just have never found anything that works the same way. It's mm -hmm. why I get stuck on certain things. You know, I use um, Markdown Pad, which is, hasn't been supported in years. Um, it's still the best Markdown editor. It's really tough for me. I, it took me a long yeah. time to get off of um, Metro Twit, remember. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because I, 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 I don't just want to go do something different. I want it to be... So, yeah. This is As interesting because I really thought it was more nostalgia, like, oh, our old Windows is going away. No, 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 no. no. It, but it, people use it. Yes. It's interesting. A lot of people use it. Apparently. It's like Notepad. Yeah. Like people always go, oh, who uses Notepad? And then when you say that, you see the whole internet like <laughs> right. explode, you right. know? <laughs> the Notepad yeah. um, paint thing between us is very interesting. Um, you know, people like to paint Mary Jo and I into these uh, comfortable little corners, you know. <laughs> Every anytime Notepad comes yeah. up, it's like Mary Jo, Mary Jo, Mary Jo. Um, I, I use Notepad every single day too. I, I don't use it to write articles like Mary Jo does. I'm not an insane person, <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, hold on, buddy. Um, <laughs> oh, I knew it. I knew it. No, come no, on, but, uh, do not insult no, Notepad. Come the on, thing that's man. most interesting about this stuff is we we both actually do use those tools to get work done every single day. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, they're an actual part of the workflow. Um, and I know that people hear that and they're like, that's goofy and it doesn't make any sense. And you should be able to use something that works better or whatever. And um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I know. I don't know what to say. It's interesting I've, I've tried, I really do try. There are third party programs, as we said. There are. And yeah. so it's interesting. People really want it. They want to use something that comes with Windows. What is that about? Why? Why is that? Well, you think? Well, I think well, it's habit. I think it's yeah, habit. We like just know I, it. we just know it. In, it's like you, know, you notepad, can do this yourself it's right there. now. Actually, Rick, you should. What computer are you looking at in front of you? An iPad. No, I'm looking no. at. It. <laughs> okay. Do you have a Windows? No, I'm trying to destroy your here. example. I have a Surface laptop in front of me. Okay. So do this. Um, run Microsoft Paint. Just like open the Start menu, type okay. Paint, okay. and Paint will come up. Yeah. And run it, and and kind of observe the density of the tools in its ribbon, wow. and and what's available. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's look for Paint very 3D. Dense, very dense ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, but it's it, there's there are there's x a, number of commands there. It's a fairly yeah. dense. It's a Microsoft yeah. Word or um, those touch Office targets. Style I need a, I'm going to need a stylus. This is can't use your finger with it, right? Which is part finger. of the problems. Yeah. Uh, but let's say you do want to do some finger painting. Bring up Paint 3D and and compare the the number and size of the UI elements in this application. Mm -hmm. And just click on uh, oh, new on the left. Look at that! I like that. And the fun <laughs> things. And look, I can just draw with okay. a crayon. But you see my do you understand my problem here? Well, no. Well, I'm not sure what your point is. <laughs> so, I, I, no, I really like this. I, I my far goal was not to show you something paint new to you, Leo. It was to belittle this thing. I don't want to use that paint <laughs> because it's so funky and old, and I can't touch it. Wow. So, <laughs> point not taken, I guess. No, well, okay, let's put it this way. For actual productivity work, <laughs> I think that in this case, paint makes more sense. I don't begrudge the fact that paint 3D is man. there. And so to anyone t who says to me, well, paint 3D is good enough, you should just accept that and use it. No, what it's I would a say different is, tool, though, I understand. There are different kinds of tools. Yeah. And and they, by the way, you're, the finger painting thing is kind of interesting because, yes, that's one of the things, but the traditional paint is not good for that. Right. Um, if you want to use that, maybe paint 3D would make more sense. But right. Why can't they both be there? Why can't we have you know? both? Or why why isn't UWP uh, scalable enough that if I run that Paint 3D <laughs> app on an actual productivity computer, that the buttons don't look like Play School Weeble things, and it mm -hmm. it, it it just has a more professional look and feel? Why does I it have, have to, to say, look? I think this is a problem unique 
to Windows, though? Because I'm thinking, you know, in the early days of the Mac, it came with Paint and Draw and yes. uh, and uh, I can't Mac Write and all that stuff. But it's been a long time since you know uh, I used right. a computer that came with these mm -hmm. tools. Yeah. That's you know, right. Well, actually, you, even the Mac today does not have a Paint. -like no, you're expected to mm -hmm. find one you really like and download. Here's it, the thing, though. Buy it. Um, you have an iPad in front of you, and you know yes. this because you've looked at all of them. You can load something like Affinity right. Painter or whatever it's which called. Which is like Photoshop. Off, which looks like Photoshop on an iPad. Yeah. I guess my point is, why can't it be professional looking? It has, to, For some reason, the Windows thing looks like this ridiculous toy for children, and I'm comparing it to PC apps. Okay, well, let's compare it to iPad apps. I'm uh, sure I there are childish like looking paint app, apps actually. on the iPad. Yeah, it What's looks that? like a professional iPad app. You're right. It looks like a more professional iPad. Mm. I think iPad apps look more professional than that thing. I think they're, and, and I think that Affinity tool is a great example of yeah. how, on a touch UI based system, you can create something that looks professional and is right. efficient for someone who's doing actual workflow, right? right. And yeah. not just you know tinker toying around with their finger on the screen. Right. And I, I, yeah. I just don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah, I no, spend a lot of time not understanding things. Yeah, I think that's yeah. pretty well. It's a really interesting uh, discussion, frankly. Yeah, yeah. It it's uh, it was funny to see the whole gamut of what people were thinking. Some people were like you, like people still use Paint. Yeah, I know. And then other people were like, look, Paint 3D has everything that Paint 2D has. But again, my point is. I want the simple solution, and this yep. is why I use Notepad and not OneNote, right? Like, I want the simplest yep. thing, and I think it's good to have the opportunity to use the simple thing and not have to use the thing that has every bell and whistle yeah. on it. That's right. That's right. In fact, what, the reason I moved off of Microsoft Word in the first place, because obviously I'd used that for, you know, 15 years or something or more, I don't even yeah. know. Um, yeah. is that I felt like there was too much hand-holding going on and I wanted to write and not have the mistakes that were made be because this thing was outthinking me on right. grammar yeah. or spelling or whatever, often wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, I feel like I have a better system yeah. now than I did before. And it's simpler. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, there's a, a trend in writing these days and writing apps that, you know, the UI just gets out of the way. You know, it's like distraction-free mm -hmm. writing. Uh, Mary Jo would call that application notepad.exe because that's exactly oh, right. what it is. Distraction right. free writing. <laughs> right. Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay. But that's paint is alive. If it, if anyone heard otherwise, <laughs> paint is alive. Right. And it's the other thing is to come with Windows. It's not going to disappear yeah. in the creators. Yep. Maybe Maybe yeah. no. a little gun shy because of what happened to uh, Windows Media Center. But actually, right? that's a great example of a solution that stuck around far longer than it should have yeah. and right. shows how Microsoft really does things. And that was my initial reaction to the paint thing, which was like, I don't know why they keep trying to stab this thing in the back. But frankly, given their love of legacy code, they they, they have a hard time getting rid of stuff. They really If do. even one person can this. stand up in the back of the room yeah. and be like, I use this. Because you know, of they, yeah. yeah, Yeah, they try not, they really try not to get rid of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I can, you know, I'm looking at the things you can do. By the way, it's kind of funny because they did add to the Paint toolbar a button that says "Open in Paint 3D." So, yeah, mm -hmm. they're, bastards. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're trying to they're trying to move you over. Ruined it. Yeah, yeah. but it, but I mean, there's sneer at the know, end. I I don't know. Does this have I, all the functionality? I don't think it does. I think no, it's, it doesn't. It's considerably uh, simpler. Well, there's the shapes. Okay. Yeah, it, is, it has emojis. Well, and there's and there's, there's a shapes palette over here. <laughs> it's a more look at this. Is, I mean, this is a more modern Paint 3D is a more modern UI. It's a you may not like it. I mean, I could I could see that argument, but it's just not the same thing. Yeah, it's it's not the same. It could thing. be close to the same thing. What's missing? Yeah, it could. It, it, no, it could. And that's what you know. I like I said. Um, I don't understand why UWP apps don't scale better. Yeah. Don't offer you kind of a pro and a consumer version of the UI, if you will, yeah, um, well, or a touch and non touch right? version yeah. of the UI. I mean, if I, find I show that to you be, Affinity on the iPad, oh, you'll be you, you won't believe it's not Photoshop. It's unbelievable. Yeah, but it's hard to use because it's got yes. a thousand buttons. No, but know? the point is, you can make something that powerful. Like a professional photographer totally. could get away with just using an iPad. Totally. Yeah. Um. But you, there's there's a cons well, I don't want to look at the video. How do I get out of that? There's a considerable. Uh, I mean, this UI. Look at this thing. Yeah. This is not. 
It's not discoverable. Not is that what you're looking for? I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's, there's a significant yeah. learning curve yep. on this. Yeah, there is. Yep. But it is, I mean, it is very much like, I mean, look, I've got, I've got layers, I've got uh, curves. I mean, if you want to make fun of something, open up the Photos app on Windows 10 and then compare that to this. We could go, right. Right. you know, we could yeah. do this all day. I mean, right. these apps were all really mm -hmm. sad. Well, yeah. And I, and I think a lot of people like the power of Affinity, the fact that you now can, on an iPad, have a very powerful yeah. program. But I don't think it, it's... Nobody's praising its UI. Mm. There's also By the way, kind of ironically, a... this comes from Serif, which is, for years, was a Windows software maker. Yeah, yeah. Serif, you know, was the... They did that page layout program and... Right. Sounds like almost like an Amiga thing to me, but... Yeah, Serif was kind of... It, I always thought of it as a kind of a second tier... Right, uh, Windows developer actually. Well, they must have seen, you know, Photoshop or Adobe puts their uh, kind of mobile apps out, but they don't really ever bring their desktop solution to mobile. And I'm well, sure they saw that as an opportunity. Right, but that's where Adobe, I think, might be doing this better because yeah. they are gradually bringing most of the tools in, but they're trying to do it in a way that that is more touch friendly and uh, and iPad. The, the other, you know, <laughs> this is a topic we could literally never end be, in some ways, because if you think about just like serviceability as one angle, does Windows need to contain everything that most people would need or should it be stripped down and you should go to the store and get the apps that you want instead, right? right? And, and what are the different models for that? And um, I noticed, you know, I did the Microsoft um, Signature PC study and there's, there's a goofy thing that goes on kind of psychologically when you give people stuff that... Some people will see the apps that are built into a, a laptop from Lenovo or HP or whatever as crapware, which I mm -hmm. certainly see them as. And other people perceive that as value. And they, they, I got more stuff, thus this thing is worth more, you know, um, based on what I paid for it. And, um, you know, the operating system thing, you know, Microsoft is in a tough spot because they're trying to please everybody in this one thing. You know, and there are people who look at Windows 10 today and they think, why is all this crap on here? What is all this yep. stuff? <laughs> and there are other people who probably get a new Windows 10 PC and they're like, look at this. It's got games. It's got, yep. you know, 3D utilities. This is really cool. And yep. I, I don't know how you fix this problem. I don't think there is any one. There can't be any one good approach. I no. think this is part of the problem for Windows or for Microsoft. I feel like, I feel like the problem is it's inconsistent, right? Like if it had... <laughs> a whole bunch of everything, then you're like, okay, that's just the way Windows is. It includes all these apps. It's part of the operating right. system, right? right? But then there are apps that are missing and you're like, wait, why is there a mail app included, but not a blah, right? And, and yeah, well, uh, why, you know, um, Windows used to include sort of through Essentials, a, a wonderful movie editor. Um, right. And now it doesn't, but there's a, like a 3D editor, a 3D objects editor and a 3D printer and, uh, th these are tasks that a very small percentage of the user base are ever going to do, yeah. and they're they ship as part of Windows. Yeah, and you know, it's a strange. I, some of the decisions are strange. <laughs> well, the goal, they, it's very clear. Their goal is to make Windows an environment for 3D everything, right? Like there's the mm -hmm. the 3D for everyone initiative, and like this is part of their push because of Hololens and yeah, augmented reality and mixed reality. This thing, I, right? that I don't get at all. I don't think it's. I don't yeah. think it's ever going to make any sense. I, I, I think I it's just, misguided. I think it's dopey. Yeah, I think it's a misreading mm -hmm. of Nobody where things are going and what's going to be popular. This. And yeah, um, yeah. they have a bad habit with this kind of thing. And and unfortunately for Microsoft, you know, I think this comes up a lot. They're they're a little bit stuck in the sense that their one big successful client platform was Windows on PCs, um, and they don't have a more yeah. modern way of getting new technologies out into the world. Well, and you know, to, everyone, to be fair, this is a mistake Silicon Valley makes in general, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the when you're a hammer, everything is a nail. I mean, when Windows is what's yeah. popular uh, for you in this case, or Android, you know, Android or iPhone are kind of better conduits for this kind of stuff. You see things that they do with Hololens on the Microsoft side; it's very exciting. And then you see what they do with Tango, say, which is li weirdly mm -hmm. limited, or what Apple's about to do with ARKit or whatever it's called in iOS, and you realize, mm -hmm. yeah, this is. This is where the mainstream use of this technology is going to be. Um, and you kind of feel bad for Microsoft because yeah. they did come out with something pretty innovative there. And there's some cool ideas there, but they were kind of single-minded yeah. in their approach to getting it out into the world. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they were. 
That was delightfully free of gonging, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I know. I only gave you one gong she on couldn't that. Really disagree <laughs> with you. I'm just. I'm. I'm fearful for Notepad. That's all I'm going to say. I, just, I really think. I keep going about back the children. To alternatives like Note. You I must know. Have tried Notepad Plus Plus, right? I yeah, haven't, actually, but I know it exists. It's I will awesome. say so. I know. You using Notepad, you're in much better shape if they get rid of it than me using Paint. I, I agree because um, there are alternatives. There are. Yeah, there are no that. alternatives to Paint that are as simple as Paint. Right. And you could argue right. Notepad Plus Plus is is more complicated, but uh, yeah. Well, but you could strip it down, and it, I'm sure you know. we can find Mary Jo a program. As, I know you can. I mean, all you, you can. all you want is just plain text entry, right? I mean, you're just yes. That's, that's why right. you like it. Surely just, there right. is an app out there. <laughs> I could handle that task. <laughs> like I said, Steve Gibson uses brief. Chapter one should, uh, of every programming book. Yeah, exactly. I could, you know, that's right. I could write it for you. Yeah, I mean, we could probably do it right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Chapter one, hello world. <laughs> Chapter two, notepad. It's really yeah. true, actually. No, and you know what? It's just habit, right? It it really is just habit. You get something in your workflow, you get used to it, yeah. and even if there's an alternative, you're just like, yeah, but I'm used to notepad, right? Well, <laughs> but like I said, I mean, so crazy. Leo brought up an issue that I I kind of raced through my head a little bit about, you know, why do we use the things that are built into Windows? Is it um, right. familiarity, uh, convenience, yeah. you know, whatever? Yeah. I, I do test a lot of computers. It's nice to not have to install 117 applications on every single computer. There's, yeah. I guess there's some element to that. There is. Um, there, Apple does ship text edit, which is about as dopey as, no, I'm simple as Notepad. Yeah, but um, Apple also does, like I said, doesn't ship a paint. And whatever their yeah, image viewer is called, it's probably called image viewer. Um, if you bring up an image in a folder... <laughs> Right. <laughs> and and you can't even unless I'm missing something, go and see the next image in the folder from within the application. Like I can't hit right arrow and go to the next one and hit right arrow and go to the next one. And I don't mm -hmm. understand that. And it's not why I don't use a Mac, but it's, you know, on the list of 117 things that make me crazy about the Mac. So, Mary, Jane, um, what do you use in Notepad? Do you use you use new <laughs> save? Do you use <laughs> word wrap? Are you trying to figure yeah. out which do you use fonts? Do you yeah. OK. Uh, and do you ever use this time date? You press F five, it injects no. the time and date. And of course, no. you use the copy paste, find, find yep. next, replace. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Do you ever use go to? No. Okay, we just covered the entire command set. By the way, kids. <laughs> of, of oh, no they have go, like I'm a line. By the way, go to relies on line numbers. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. Can you even view line numbers? No. I don't know if you can. No. Uh, but this is really probably this is probably like something that Bill Gates wrote to go with his basic. <laughs> yeah, sure. He was probably high at the time, and they haven't looked at the code in Honestly, 25 years. I literally could probably write something like this. Using, yeah, I think using I could standard too. Standard libraries to, to be like an exercise these. for the listener. Let's see who can build the best replica of Notepad, but and do how it in lines, no, right? Do it as a UWP app or something. Right. So there's always going to be a place so she can get. Notepad. I think there are some, right? Sure there, there are, there are oh, alternatives no, to Notepad. Are, the problem is no one would UWP. ship this because it's too bare right. bones. It's too ridiculous. No in fact, would, I would remove stuff from right. it. Like go to? That's ridiculous. Take that out. <laughs> There's no um, need for that. At all. Well, I'm viewing help. Does the help do anything? Is there anything in help? <laughs> help? I've never. I didn't even know there was help. <laughs> yeah, no. View oh, help. Yeah, there is. View help has nothing that to do with amazing. Notepad. So we're taking no. help out. Okay. Um, there's an about it notepad. literally goes to a a search page yeah. on the Microsoft <laughs> Answers. Like you That's amazing. Help. <laughs> uh, that is amazing. Build 1703 Microsoft. Oh, this is no, this isn't even about a uh, notepad. It's about Windows. <laughs> yeah, it's not even about out. notepad. It doesn't say notepad. You know what notepad needs, Mary Jo? Nothing. Tabs. <laughs> tabs, no. Does it have tabs? <laughs> Next, yeah. you're going to say the RSS ribbon. It has tabs, no. but you, you can't change no the ribbon. tabs. No ribbon. <laughs> no. Oh, that kind of tabs. Yeah, but you can't yeah. change the tab number of spaces it inserts. I think this is trivial to do. You know what really would be interesting, Mary Jo? <laughs> I think that there's a very similar app like this on a Synology NAS. And you yep. could be what? using that and just save it to your NAS and it would be in the cloud, but your cloud. I, it's, I you know save all my do? notepad I files I, to the I, cloud. I know, how, I know how we can do this for Mary Jo. Have Steve Gibson write an assembly language <laughs> version of this, this thing. In 2K. It would probably take up like 48 yeah. bytes or something. <laughs> Well, because and most you of this is libraries, it's just part of the API. Like, you don't yeah. have to write code for undo, cut, copy, and paste. That's all in there. <laughs> I know. Right. It's beautiful. This is so simple. There's no spell check. 
It's it's the perfect app. Well, I can see what for you for writing. I mean, it's just awesome. basically it's a text entry app. And the nice thing, of course, the reason we we love it is because it saves it as plain text, unlike right. WordPad, which will try to save it yes. as a Word document. Right. That's about the only WordPad. There's yeah. something we got to get rid of. You should get rid of WordPad. WordPad. WordPad's Remember, by the way, good <laughs> transitions. Nothing, Back nothing. in the day, Microsoft or Windows had something called Write, <laughs> and at one point they added WordPad instead. Looks like Word, kind of obviously. I think it's like an RTF. I think is the default yeah. format, probably. Um, and if you found Write, in fact, it's probably still in there. If you look for Write.exe, is it still there? Yeah, what? it's still in Windows, and it runs <laughs> WordPad. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> right is from Windows 3 at the, at oh, the yeah. very late. It's still there. Could go all the ah! That's <laughs> they have a hard time with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You you really basically, Mary Jo, there's about 800 iPad apps that would be I know. For you. There's a there's probably 800 store apps that do the I same thing are. too. Yeah. The yeah. problem really is that they they would feel compelled to add something. <laughs> I know. Would, That's what people do, right? To like ship something this silly, this simple. Right. Plus, you can do blah, blah, blah. That's what I don't want, the blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I don't, I don't want that. maybe markdown <laughs> support would be all you need. Uh, notepad.org. <laughs> but I bet you this is, uh, this is, I bet this is, um, I bet this is too much. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. It's the power user's notepad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you can add the yeah. created with notepad logo to your website, Mary Jo. I oh, would do that. I should add that. I should add that. You know what I actually miss, <laughs> and uh, and I don't know. I just this is out of left field, but uh, that blog live writer that was part of the yeah. live tools. I used yep. I used to post, and now that I'm back on WordPress, I really miss that. And there that was, exists you know, again. There's an open source, uh, but it doesn't yeah. seem to work with. Like right, oh. yeah. I can't get mm -hmm. it to see my blog. Yeah, no. I think somebody at Microsoft actually is keeping it alive. Yeah. But so yeah. I understand. I really do understand your pain because <laughs> losing Windows Live Writer was oh was my God. like ripping my, <laughs> my uh, well, not really, not not ripping my heart out. More like uh, I don't know, trimming a fingernail. It was like it was, but trimming it yeah. too close to the. Quick, that the quick it was it hurt a little <laughs> for a brief moment. <laughs> it's best just to pull that band aid right off. It is uh, okay. There is that's yeah, openlivewriter.org is the uh, yep. the new the new version of it. But it was actually but that but that's an example of that's a tool really worked, did exactly what it should do. Mm -hmm. yep. No more. Uh, it was great. Yep. And there's nothing really analogous anymore. There really isn't. I'm even looking, you know, when you look online, you really mm -hmm. can't find something that is literally just notepad. I know. Isn't that interesting? Geo right. Of course, we're getting all the suggestions now from the chat. Geo <laughs> right. Everybody is awesome. suggesting things. Yeah. 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 G edit. And if you do install Mint, G edit <laughs> in uh, Linux is fast. <laughs> oh, I told her that you'll have no shortage Linux of text editors on Linux. You can just use Pike I know. or. Yeah, Pico Whatever or Nano. Pico. Yeah. Pico, yeah. Guys, for now, Notepad <laughs> is safe. That's all I care. I'm telling you, G-Edit and Linux, and you're done. You could, you would, ne you would, and it, you, it just, you would never, and you'd never be tempted by anything because there's nothing else you'd want to do. <laughs> I think I said this in the chat room. You should just boot into Emacs. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Emacs is all you need in life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh <boy. laughs> if anything you want to so do, so rarely speechless, and yet anything you want to do, there's a keystroke in Emacs. That's true, it really and it's is. often a very complicated. It's oh, yeah, not usually a, Control C. It's usually Control Shift C V right. or something. There, oh yeah, Meta Meta C V yeah. T three. There's a very good XKCD uh, article. I'm cartoon on this topic. Let me just quickly pull it up for you because uh, it's a, it's a, it's ha it's programmers. You know how they are saying I'm a real programmer. Yeah. And uh, it all it all starts with Paul's favorite uh, program. It says Nano. Real programmers <laughs> use Emacs. Right. And she, there you go. Then the, then the woman comes in. And says, well, real no. programmers use Ed. But yeah, vi yeah. Real programmers use Ed, Vim, and then real programmers use Ed. No, real programmers use Cat. Real programmers use a magnetized needle and a steady hand. 
Excuse me, but real programmers use butterflies. They open their hands and let the delicate wings flap once. The disturbance ripples outward, changing the flow of the eddy currents in the upper atmosphere. These cause momentary pockets of higher pressure air to form, which acts as lenses that deflect incoming cosmic rays, focusing them to strike the drive platter and flip the desired bit. <laughs> nice. Of course, there's an Emacs <laughs> command to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Good old Control X Meta CM Meta Butterfly. Timothy Max. <sighs> I love that cartoon. There's a, you know, there's an XKCD cartoon for every subject. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry oh. I distracted you and took you down that oh. horrible road. I apologize. You deserve better. <laughs> Windows 10 new insider build is here. So I'm actually trying to um, enable this feature. So do you mind describing this real quick? I want to see if I can. Get this to the, work. The um, PC to phone link thing. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. What does that do? So, so this is a build that came out right before we started Windows Weekly. It's a new test build for Fall Creators update. And what's surprising is there are quite a few new features in this, and we're very close to this being declared RTM. Um, Ooh. So, one of these features is called Microsoft's calling it phone PC linking. So this is a thing they talked about at Build where it's like the hand app handoff thing, except it's only for one scenario in this build. It's for uh, cross-device web browsing. So it's not like app handoff, handoff any app, you know, from your Android phone to Windows. It's not that. It's just handing off a uh, web page so that if you are looking at a web page on your Android phone, because it only works on Android as of this build, um, you can automatically hand off that web page back to your Windows 10 PC and, ha you know, use it that way. They say iPhone support's coming very soon at, for this feature. And, you know, this is this is like the very tip of the pick up where you left off iceberg. Microsoft talked a lot about that at Build, and they yep. said that was going to be part of the Windows 10 Fall Creators update. Later, we found out that only a little bit well, first we thought none of that feature was going to make it into Fall Creators. Now we see it looks like this web uh, handoff piece will, but not the full pickup where you left off. Yeah, That's, interestingly. So that feature is in here. Yeah, yes. so the, the language that they use suggests that this will become that full pickup where you left off. It does. Because, it does because the way they say that. it in the UI, it says start tasks and documents on your phone, then yeah. continue on your PC instantly. Mm -hmm. I just want to point out uh, Apple's done this for uh, at least uh, yes. Well, yes. Uh, and I will just point out it's a lot easier to do when you control both sides of this yes. equation. You know, right? Yeah. Um, right. You know, so Apple has that advantage. There's no doubt about it. Um, yeah. So I added my Google Pixel to the mm -hmm. PC. Oh well, that's cool. Yeah. It works with Android. That actually is cool. Yeah. Only you know, Android so far. Something. Actually, that makes sense because there's no Windows Phone and Apple won't let them touch it. So, well, yeah. actually. It, it does work with Windows Phone, right? Well, if you have Cortana sure. on your PC and you have Cortana on your phone, you can kind of make this handoff yeah. thing work too, but it's... Well, and it, by the way, it, it will also work on iPhone. It just doesn't today. If you oh, use Cortana. Gonna, oh, right? you have to have Cortana installed. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yep. You so know what, though? That's uh, actually... I installed Cortana for that reason. Uh, not that particular reason, but just because I wanted to get uh, Windows notifications and so forth. On yep. my iPhone, that was that I, was well worth I, it. I think he. Hmm. <laughs> so you're trying to. So get okay, so uh, you know you're familiar, or you've at least heard of this. Uh, there's an Android app called Microsoft Apps, and when it first came out, yep. it was this really goofy yeah. advertisement for Microsoft's apps on Android. Right. Right. When you run it now, you can. It, that's still in there. But at the top, it says for Windows Insiders, try continuing tasks from your phone directly on your Windows PC. And you, I guess you have to install something, or maybe this app does it for you. Let me see what it does. Sorry, I, gotta, I have to... I think they said screenshot. the app does it, right? I think that yeah, app is what the, does yeah, it. Yeah, you think this... Okay, Instead of okay. Cortana? I think so. You still need Cortana. Okay. I don't so think you do. The screenshots they have are what they had in the blog post. In other words, it says yeah. you're in a web browser on, on the device, so it could be Chrome, obviously. It says in the mobile browser... Uh, click the share a button and then select continue on PC. So this app must have added that to the share pane in Android, mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. task or whatever. 
then you can choose whether to continue now or later. Okay, let me do this. And then, so it looks like it's a one-way trip, by the way. It's not PC to phone, okay. it's phone to PC. So oh. phone to PC. this thing goes yep. to the Microsoft website. That's still useful. I will choose That's what share, yeah. share, share, share. Yep. Choose, yeah, there it is. Yep. Continue on PC. And I will choose continue now. Sorry, I'm taking screenshots too. <laughs> and... I, I like him. He's doing double duty. Seriously. He's writing his column and the show. He is. He's doing everything. All the same. I, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Unfortunately, I have to sign into my Microsoft account, so this will take 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it didn't come up as just an option, you know, where I select the account. You know, Paul, Microsoft obviously... has this new authenticator that you just click. Yeah, no, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Let me go through the laborious 17-step uh, process of authenticating. Yeah. Where I type in a number, use my finger, promise my firstborn. <laughs> so, oh so what is this going to do again, Mary Jo? This is going to... Um, so, ultimately, this is pick up where you left off. And that's like Apple handoff. Right. That's what they're building, right? Right. Um, right. Just yeah, if, is, for now, the only thing it does thing is web do. browsing. I got to point out. This is not an easy thing to do. Even Apple no. has work on this. Okay. So, it's a little more laborious than... What's it called? Handoff? Handoff and continuity, Handoff. yeah. So yeah. it does a little um, finding your devices circle thing for a while. It actually found four devices mm -hmm. for me. Actually, it found more than four, but I can see four. So there's an Elite Book X360. There's two with those terrible desktop names. I can't believe I have those. Oh, it's nice. You and then there's the, the, nice. Surface, uh, the Surface Book is there. So if yes. I select the Surface Book, it says it's sent to my PC. Oh. And then on the PC, Edge opened and it went to the web page I was viewing. That is a really... Mm -hmm. That's a really tough way to get from here to there. Let me tell you, <laughs> Jeez. Mm -hmm. all I was doing was browsing a web page. So let me tell you how I would handle this task um, between my Android phone and my Windows PC. I would use Chrome. And Chrome has the ability to browse tabs that are on other devices, including your phone. So if you find a web page that you like in Chrome on iOS or Android, you can turn to your computer, run Chrome. And I think it's Snoop. I don't remember exactly how you do it. I'm not going to belabor this, but you can access tabs that are on other devices right away. Mm -hmm. So this is them trying to do this end run. And I guess in a way, uh, you know, because Edge is not available in other browsers, if you do choose to use Edge on yeah. Windows, and, you know, God help you, um, I guess this is a way to use whatever, whatever browser you want on mobile and then use Edge on the PC. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. That was quite a round trip. <laughs> Jeez. Yes, it was. It's a lot of steps to just bring up yeah. the Microsoft website. Hmm. Yeah. Is but you know, I could see one useful scenario would be maps and directions, right? You look up yep. some directions. Well, although it sure. would be useful the other way around, not this way so exactly. much, right? Yeah. Like you look no, up I, a map I, on your phone and then you want to send it to your PC. Uh, I'm going to just start using Linux. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> mint, <laughs> mint, <laughs> mint. <laughs> Let's say let's talk oh, about what boy. else is in the build besides this yes. feature because there are a number of other things. This is build sixteen two five one for people in the in the fast ring. And another thing that got added in the um, today's build is I, I probably shouldn't say this out loud because I'm going to set off everyone's devices mm -hmm. when I do this, right? But you can word. use Cortana voice <laughs> commands to do things like turn um, uh, shut down or turn off your PC. Uh, restart yep, your PC, it, lock your right, PC. Yep. That's kind of cool for people who, you know, especially if you use it above the lock screen and you're not at your PC, you can just say, I won't say it, but it's especially blah, blah, cool if you want to do it to somebody else. <laughs> Surprise. Right. Oh, man. Would that work? Well, I mean, hopefully she does. She must do. I think you can set it up for voice recognition. So I think so, it, too, yeah. right? Knows yeah, you. I always yeah. set up Cortana for voice recognition. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't let yeah. other. But, you know, a lot of people don't have. Uh, Pins on their phones, I would imagine a lot of people wouldn't think to do this either. Yeah, right. It is a pain in the butt. Yeah. You have to t read a bunch of state sentences. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Um, what else did they put in? A feature that allows, um, what, was, what was this one? Use assign inf information to apply user settings after a restart or an update so that um, you'll be able to sign in faster and restore your applications that have been registered for application restart. That's just kind of a nice boot up, um, I guess, just a, like a little update or upgrade to boot up. 
-hmm. tons of bug fixes because they just finished the bug bash um, for Windows 10 for PCs. Uh, they've got all kinds of bug fixes updates um, for input, keyboards, touchpads, edge, PC gaming, you name it. It's in here. Lots of them. Uh, they also updated mobile with a new feature, which is surprising because they have been not adding any new features to Windows 10 mobile in mm -hmm. the latest fast rings. But today, build 15235, if you're in the Windows 10 mobile insider fast ring, got <laughs> uh, a new feature, continuum uh, ability to switch to portrait mode orientation, which is very nice. That did not exist. Something they had promised, <laughs> I think, last year at Ignite. <laughs> so my, here's my theory on that one. Um, they yeah. have gotten a lot of negative feedback about not adding features to Windows 10 Mobile, they and they have no plan yeah. to support this thing with new features at all. Um, yeah. Remember Donna's answer to this question at um, yeah. WP, or I'm sure. sorry, at Inspire yeah. or whatever it's called. Um, yeah. I think they had this thing done. And someone said, can we throw these guys a bone? There's been a lot of complaining. Yeah, could be. We just finished our uh, two-year plan to get rid of Windows Phone. Let's yep. let's just do something for the fans. And let's I bet this was thing. just sitting there. That you could know, be. It, it wasn't some plan like, hey, in mid-July, we're going to roll out a new feature. <laughs> yeah. I, I bet this was just something <laughs> they had sitting in the can. That could be. That could be. So today, um, there also was a webcast with Kevin Gallo um, that happened right before Windows Weekly also. And he was talking about uh, fe developer features for Windows 10, especially around the SDK for Fall Creators Update. He actually mm -hmm. went on the record and said the SDK is feature complete now. Does, that mean, does that mean the operating system is too? No, it know. just means the, Not you know, the extensible right? parts of the... System yeah. are, you know. Um, yeah. No, they'll, they'll because be I don't think little things. Yeah, they're to still going to do things. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So at least the SDK for Fall Creators Update is feature complete, which oh, means they're pretty much near done. Completely zoned on that. I meant to watch that. Yeah. You can go back and watch it. It's been pre recorded, yeah, I, will. I, I, will. I think. I like Kevin and Gallo, he, and I, I'm curious about that. He's good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They talked a lot about they get they were taking live audience questions, lots of things around you know the UWP platform and how that's going to work mm -hmm. and what they're going to add to it. Um, also, uh, some things around you know what's going on with mixed reality and Hololens. So it's it's definitely worth a watch if you are a developer and it's on Microsoft's Channel Nine. You can go watch that now. I think. Mm -hmm. But should, we should also talk about what they announced um, with splitting the branches for Redstone. Would you like to talk about that, Paul, or do you want me to? I will try. To? It's it's okay. complicated, as I understand it. it. <laughs> Remember, yeah. um, every time a new version of Windows 10 is coming soon, we we have what I have. I think I've described it as a magic window, but it's this period of time, and we never know when it's going to end. But during that period of time, if you're on the Windows Insider fast ring with the latest build, th that is the build they're going to ship as the final version of the OS. You can actually yeah. switch back to a production ring w without any issues, which is something you normally can't do. Um, because once you get, you know, sit down the super highway, you can't switch over to the slow yeah. lane or whatever. I mean, you could go fast, slow, but you can't go back to production. But when those things line up, you can. And the problem with that is you don't know when it's going to stop because you may wake up one morning and your computer's rebooted and installed a new build and now you're on the next train and sorry, you know, we've reset the clock. Well, <laughs> they've added a new complexity to this because Microsoft seems to find a way to do it. It's amazing. But um, the way I understand this is they basically, they well, actually, I've seen it. I mean, I've, I've used it. They've added a switch to Windows Update. And so if you go into, um, let me do it on this computer, actually. Oh, no, that's not fast ring. If you're on the fast ring and you go into um, settings, you know, um, update and security and then Windows Insider program, there's a new option where you can switch between active development of Windows and then skip ahead to the next Windows release. Active development of Windows is the current, meaning actually the next version of Windows, meaning RS3, Redstone 3, meaning the Fall Creators update. The next release of Windows is really the next, next release of Windows. It's RS4 or Redstone 4. Uh, this is the version of Windows that will probably be called Windows 10 version 1803 when it comes out in the spring. And so they're actually giving you the option right now to choose mm -hmm. to remain on that fast train with always on the next thing 
or to stick with the current, really the next version of Windows. It's a little complicated. I would describe these things and uh, kind of see it through to the end. Right. They're also going to cut off the number of people who can go to RS4 because they obviously they, they especially the end game here. They want a big audience of people testing this version of Windows before it goes public. Right. They only um, want to cut off the number of people going to RS4 temporarily, though. Right. Yeah, like, because eventually the whole thing will yeah. switch over. Right. Because right. You know, at some point the fall of creators update becomes complete. And then a couple yeah. of weeks goes by and then, the, you know, the RS4 train it leaves the station again. Yeah. Um, and this is this is it's interesting on a number of levels, but uh, there's also a little nuance to this build that they released today, which is that regardless if you're in the fast ring, and you regardless of which of those options you have set, uh, active development of Windows is the default. Obviously, it's the normal fast ring. Um, you actually are going to get this build, which makes sense because. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I'm not sure why this makes sense, to be honest. I was going to say because this is probably the final release, but actually that's not necessarily true. So I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I guess yeah. maybe they're just not ready with an RS4 build. So I think that's it. One reason is they're not ready. But also, isn't this skip ahead thing for people who want to get the updated apps and not just the operating system, right? Like well, if you pick skip ahead, <laughs> you're supposed yeah. to get the updated apps. The apps updated apps, not the Windows ones that are stuck. Uh, right, yeah, because one of the, right. Okay, so again, um, yeah, this is like when the uh, disclaimer comes on for an ad from a, a medical company, and these are the by the side effects of the thing you're about to take. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you are, as any version of Windows comes to a close, the development of that version, um, they yeah. freeze the apps uh, because you know you have to have a stable thing you're going to go off of. Now, of course, those apps are actually still being updated, and so there's kind of yeah. a goofy thing where someone who has said I want to be in the fast ring, meaning I always get the latest version of the OS and also the latest version of the apps. What they get is the last version of that next version of Windows and the version of the apps that match to that thing. And yes. so there's a period of weeks where your apps are not updated because the version you're on is uh, of the apps is higher than the version that's out in the public. Yes. But it's not as high as the version that's actually being developed internally at Microsoft. And, you know, I've made the argument in the past that that's a little goofy. Like, if um, Microsoft doesn't like to be transparent about this kind of thing. In other words, Microsoft won't come out and say, congratulations, everybody. We just shipped the RTM version of yeah. Windows 10 Fall Creators Update. If Very you want to re remain on this build and get the apps that come only in this build, which we recommend, you should switch to the slow ring. However, if you want to keep testing new versions of apps, you should stay in the fast ring and we'll all move forward together. They don't do that mm -hmm. because they kind of pretend that RTM isn't a thing. And so what they do is they just freeze the apps. And so you got to, I think there's a pretty sizable chunk of people out there who um, always want the new big thing and they're not getting it for this temporary period of a couple of weeks. Yeah. I saw some people thinking this skip ahead thing was the um, ludicrous ring. Remember when there was talk of yes. like an even faster? It's not that. Yep. It's not that. That's good though. It's it just be. Microsoft's getting ready to start going to Redstone 4. And so they forced I think this addresses the, builds, the complaints right? they had in the past. I think that's what this is about. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, Microsoft, whether we see it or not publicly, Microsoft is always forking the Windows development tree always has different development branches that go out to different audiences and do different things. And of course they have to split it for Redstone four and that thing moves forward on its own path. Um, and so th this time for the first time ever, they've actually separated it out. I mean, they're going to merge back, right? Because eventually the fast ring becomes the fast ring. I would imagine, yeah. right? I mean, the people who stuck on the fast ring with RS three will go past the, t the point of general availability yeah. Yeah. And they'll get the new apps, and then I, I assume they're going to get the RS4 stuff. I, that's how it's always happened. Yeah, I'm confusing myself just talking about this. I know. Yeah, it's super it's, confusing. It's hard to keep just, this in my head. I, I think if I were summarizing it, I would say to people who are in the Insider program, if you want to make sure to be going to RS4, Redstone 4, as quickly as possible, pick the skip ahead thing. And if you are yep. somebody who isn't ready for that and doesn't really need to be on that right away, wait and you will you will be moved to redstone 4 when it starts yeah. coming out in build form but if um, you don't really also, really really need to be there you don't need to do this <laughs> yeah and if you if you want to do this for some reason you got to move fast because they're going right. it's going to fill up um because yep. obviously microsoft does want the, the majority of people in the insider program to test the thing they were about to release um worrying about something yep. that's going to come out in the spring is 
you know, kind of cute for right now. It's not really that important, but um, I think the important thing is w- what's about to happen for the public. Yeah. Yeah. Or will happen. I don't know whenever it happens. September. Normals for people like me for normals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I like it that they've named it after a rocket ship. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> um, I sort of enjoy any Spaceballs reference. So, oh, is that from Spaceballs? <laughs> yeah, Ludicrous Speed. Oh, lu- Ludicrous. Yeah, no, I was talking about Redstone. Oh, Redstone. Redstone. Yeah. Minecraft. That's it. It's a Minecraft. Oh, yeah, it's Minecraft. Because there's also Redstone yep. rockets. Oh. Mm-hmm. oh, thank you, Leo, for sharing that fascinating tidbit. Yeah, um, that's not what it means. No, that's. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Redstone's the thing you make stuff like calculators, electronics yeah. within Minecraft. Minecraft. Mine, sure. Mine, That's why they call Mine's, it the Creators Update, Leo, because you make stuff with it. Surface Pro 4 got some updates over the weekend mm-hmm. as well. Now, this is the new Surface is not a number. It's a it's, right. it's just right. a Surface Pro. So the 4 is the previous edition. That's right. And there's not really much to say here other than that this is a massive set of updates. It, it basically encompasses the entire hardware stack. So... Um, you're going to get it, but if you want to just jump start on it, you can just hit Windows Update and you'll you'll see it. It's it's really big. Uh, but nothing for Surface Pro yet, huh? For the no. issues. No. I I got a uh, set of firmware updates on Surface Book as well, and but I got it right after I, I put it onto the Insider Preview recently, and I wonder if it wasn't tied to that. It's possible that. They had actually released those firmware updates earlier in the year, but only for those people who are on the next version of Windows. And so I didn't see them until right now. I don't really, I only have this, you know, one example. So I'm not really sure how broad that is, but they never came out and announced anything. So I'm guessing it was related to the preview. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was, a, though, an update, a, surf, uh, a firmware update for Surface Pro that fixed the um, sync hibernation thing. That. That right. did come out yeah. already. Oh, oh, oh. So there was good, one. Good. That's yeah. Codename CPAP. <laughs> <laughs> My Surface Book has uh, sleep apnea. It what snores. Are you, it's snoring in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm excited, uh, and I know you are, about the new Cortana powered smart thermometer. Yeah, the way this got announced was so crazy. I know. Um, so Microsoft posted to YouTube, this one minute clip about a Johnson Controls smart thermostat using Cortana and Windows 10 IoT inside. Uh, there was no details. Like they yep. just showed you this and it's like, hey, we're some they're building this. Oh, wait it looks a minute. like it's and, a thermostat, not a thermometer. Oh, I did right, that again. Thermostat. You I moron. keep writing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's That's me. I did the difference. same thing. When I posted my article, I yeah. wrote thermostat. I a therm- I don't understand different. heat or a, cold, a, Leo. A thermometer would, with, with voice would be yeah. of dubious value. A that thermometer, it's like we, we built an IoT thermometer. You can put in Antarctica to measure the climate change that's occurring. Thermometer. No, sorry. What sorry. temperature is it? It's 54 it's degrees. Thermostat. Yep. Thermostat. Thermometer, what temperature is it now? It's 54 no, it's, it's Cortana. It would say, hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. The temperature yeah. is 54 degrees. Way, Thanks for asking. Have you played Minesweeper lately? Do you want to hear a joke? <laughs> no, okay. I want to know the temperature. Thermostat makes a lot more sense. Thermostat. So you say, yeah. you know, hey, hey, Theo, set the uh, temperature to 72, except when yeah. I leave. So you should, if you haven't done it, Leo, you should look at the video for this thing. It's actually, it's actually, it's actually looks pretty nice. cool looking. Yeah. Right. I know. And is, John, I don't, is Johnson a well-known... Yeah, they. I think they really? invented the that. indoor thermostat or something. Like they've been around for hu- over a hundred years. They invented Fahrenheit. Okay, so they uh, did. Ooh, it's pretty. It's just like a it's bezel-less really nice. display. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just want to know: Does it work with Alexa? <laughs> well, people are asking that, right? I've had several people ask me that. Yep. Maybe. Maybe. You know, it has. It's funny. It has the Windows 10 home screen on it. I'm yeah, not, I'm not sure I really want that, but yeah, that's interesting. Huh? So, so here's if you the remember, thing with this device. Um, sorry, this is to be clear. This is a commercial device. Yeah. Um, this isn't like a home kind of thing, well, although, unless you're oh, rich, I guess. It's I, for a it's, hotel or something. Yeah, well, it's designed for commercial applications. Your air so is good. No, they show it in home settings too, though. In the video. No, I know that, but I, but if you actually you're watch, you know, if you watch the whole price. thing and, and listen to the way they describe it, it's it's yeah. It's very much a, 
I mean, you could buy it as an individual, but it's not really, it's not going to be in Best Buy. It's like a, no, a, a very high no. end device. Let me, let right. me look, go to the YouTube clip because that's, uh, that's, so we were, I was looking at the ZD. It's, uh, you know, oh, it's, it's for those who have, quali who have oh, qualified for the right kind of financing can um, <laughs> well healed <laughs> buyers. Okay. So, you know, what's crazy, Paul, I found out after I wrote about this, people said, mm -hmm. yeah, didn't you see this? It was at Microsoft Inspire. It was at the partner show in the booth. I was at the Microsoft booth. I, I, it was a big booth, but I didn't see it. And yeah. a couple of people said they went up to them and asked. Of every day. Every day. As humans, what surrounds us. As humans, we need. I just, I, I find this odd because this thing kind of appeared tied to nothing. You know, there wasn't, <laughs> so they just put it wasn't on like CGA was happening or yeah. there was some kind of industry show or, you know, whatever. It just kind of appeared one day. moves with us. Its daily reporting provides the insights needed to create the perfect atmosphere for your business, your home, the places you want to visit, the places you need to visit. Is it transparent glass? Glass knows when you're in the room. Oh, yeah, I believe glass. it is. And that, that helps it kind of disappear into the wall yeah. a little bit. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. Outdoor air quality and intelligently changes its settings. It is. It's a pretty looking device. Is it, well, so is it user or do you need it's not what nobody knows Johnson controls with Windows IOT core I bet you need an installer this looks like a yeah this is you know what I mean it doesn't look like well, a, you just connect the yellow wire to the yellow brick. thing and yeah it doesn't yeah beautiful combination of you'd have to at least have a drick brick drill designed to make our space but this thing hits like the micro every Microsoft check box it imaginable it's through. Cortana powered it, it, it's an IOT device using literally Windows core IOT it hits Azure services. You know, it's yeah. like it, it yeah. mm -hmm. it's like the, the holy trinity of Microsoft wow. twenty seventeen. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that is that is quite beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It is. So now so we have two it, it was, kind of devices. I, it was at Inspire and people saw it and talked to Johnson Controls at Inspire. I had one guy say, Yeah, I, I talked to the guy and he huh. said it's gonna be out this year. Huh. Um hmm. I and I had you another guy say, Yeah, you told me. Uh, uh, one guy said he said premium device like probably three hundred bucks. I don't well, that's, so but that's I don't know if either of those two things are true. No. I mean that's not much more than Nest was two twenty five. I think yeah. Right. So I don't I know if either of those things are true. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, the yeah. real issue Microsoft would more be installation. Yep. Yeah. It, I mean, it's a consumer device if it can replace your existing thermostat. That's what the Nest right. can do, the Honeywell right. can yeah. do, the Ecobee can do. But if it can't, then, well, then it really isn't. It's, you know, yeah. it's for contractors right. and businesses, yeah. If only there were some way for us to find out. But uh, alas, alas, there is not. no information about this product. It's really pretty. I re right. If it I, were 300 I bucks Johnson and I could put it instead of mine, I would. <laughs> yeah, I talked to I talked to Johnson Controls and they said, well, we'll be talking more about this in the fall. That's yeah. all they said. There's, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. the only thing so basically, everything that is cool in our world, like Windows on ARM, this thing, the um, Harman Kardon speaker, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Xbox One X. Yeah, it's all it's all happening yeah. later this fall. <laughs> the chat room has sent me the uh, website. It's glass with one S. Yep. Yeah. Which is a little bit like that thing from Portal, isn't it? Wasn't that Glados was that Portal? Gloss. I'm or, sorry. No, Glados. It's Glados. I'm sorry. Yep. I can't turn up the heat right now. You're I would call this thing Glados. The awesome. has told me you're overdue on your gas payment. Uh, yeah, there really is no information. At all. Yeah, yep. there isn't. At all on the page. Yeah. Nope. It is pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I That's bet beautiful. glass stands for something. Mm. Well, it, retroactively, it will. Yeah, it's They'll invent new. some. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. We're moving along here. How about. How about. <laughs> I don't think Mary Jo Foley wrote this particular <laughs> I headline. <did> not. <laughs> Die, flash, die, my God, why won't you just die? <laughs> <laughs> it is ironic that Adobe announced that they're killing Flash, but not for yeah. three years. This is as bad as know, Microsoft what, crazy. Uh, Notepad. I mean, all these guys are on uh, Twitter. It's like, yeah, Steve Jobs did it again. It's like, well, Come okay. Um, he wrote that letter in 2010. Yeah. And 10 years later, Adobe. What are we going to call this one? The butterfly effect? What are you talking about? Like, what are you, no. I mean, 
But well, it is in a way. I mean, reason. the beginning of the end was when the most popular phone. Oh yeah, and, yeah. No, and I know. Couldn't I'm, I'm support sure. Flash. That meant. I mean, it's going to take a while because websites then have to get rid of it, and that hasn't happened very rapidly. The fact that police still use Flash is disturbing to I me. I know. I know. No, the, I, well I heard from effects. several people. They, there are apps and like, especially professional apps and sites where Flash is still right. a requirement. Intranets a lot because you, you're yes. not going to do it on a, a public site because that leaves out everybody using iOS devices. I, you know, when Flash was a thing, when it was the kind of the only way to do interactive websites that made any sense or whatever, the thing I always hated about it was that it destroyed um, browser navigation. Right. It was this the thing that kind of existed. Yeah. Yeah. It had its. You had it. It, it had to do its own. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah, actually thinking about this this morning. I was thinking, am I sad? Or glad <laughs> that Flash is going away. <laughs> yep. And uh, I think, yeah, you can list a lot of reasons why Flash wasn't a good idea. I mean, the security issues mm -hmm. that it introduced, it was very heavy. But mm -hmm. at the time, it was the only way you could do that kind of animation on a web page. It did empower a lot of developers. A lot of apps mm -hmm. were written in it. Right. Um, there, now, the, good, the real reason you can kill Flash, in fact, frankly, you could kill it sooner than 2020, is because you can do everything you do in Flash with HTML5. Yes, exactly. It would, and, web and more. Standards. And it's, yeah. yeah. So you don't, you know, you don't um, need it anymore. My only problem with this whole Flash thing is that we can't make it suffer before it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> like yeah. some measure of revenge, I think, is required here. And I just... It was interesting <laughs> to watch how the browser manufacturers jumped on that announcement. Within yep. minutes, they yep. all said, yeah, we're killing it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, actually, Microsoft's um, announcement basically said right up front, we're going to kill Flash too, but we're going to do it even faster than yeah. Adobe is. But actually, they're doing it in the same amount of time. It's, it's, they are. <laughs> by the end of 2020, it will be gone. And that's, yeah. that's like three and a half years from now. That's a long time. That's incredible. And if you, if you look at Microsoft's post too, it, there's things happening each year. Like, here's what we're going to do by mm -hmm. this year. By 2018. By 2019, here's what we're going to do with IE and Edge. You know, so... Microsoft's yeah. approach is this whole phased thing. It's well, not you know just what? like, and we're going to dump it. <laughs> yeah, I, initially I was a little uh, cynical about that because it, it, in my kind of knee-jerk reaction, that was like, this shows you the ponderous nature of Microsoft. You know, they can't do anything cleanly and simply. and all. But, you know, the truth is, the reason it's like that is because this impacts the enterprise customers that are so it important does. because these are the guys yep. running line of business apps, whatever they are, inside of browsers, including Internet Explorer still. It's probably, I'm sure yep. the majority of people using IE or within businesses. And so they actually do have to be measured in their response to this. They can't just say, great, let's, you know, kill this thing uh, because they would, you know, they love backwards compatibility. They just can't escape it. Yeah. It's good. Um, you should write the new version of Notepad and Flash. <laughs> you probably could. Hey, hey. You know, hey. Web, web, webpad. Webpad. <laughs> Flashpad. Ooh. Yeah, ooh, ooh. that's nice. <laughs> Uh, we all saw the announcement Microsoft uh, put out about the new uh, AI artificial intelligence coprocessor they're going to be uh, creating for yeah. HoloLens. Great, it's a big deal. <laughs> this was kind of, you know what? This was uh, kind of a surprising announcement in some ways because Microsoft hasn't talked about the next HoloLens at all. Right. In well, fact, that's because they there was they kind of skipped there was supposed to the be, next. Yeah, that yeah. was Brad's story. Brad yep. Sams, where is he? He hasn't popped up on oh, this episode. Go. See, we, we all... Hey, yeah, Joe, how you doing, guys? <laughs> One hour and 45 minutes into this podcast, we just were about to make it. You know... I know. I, mean, oh, I said, I was the guy who wrote it, the article about flies. <laughs> Brad, Brad wrote an article where he correctly said Microsoft killed the second version of the HoloLens and That's just right, was Mary going to skip to number three. Good job, Brad. <laughs> Thank job, you, Mary Brad. Jo. <laughs> I'm, uh, it's amazing I don't, I don't drink know. more than I do. I don't know why I gave Brad that dopey voice. Except Isn't no, today it's Brad's birthday, I little, too? I, it's a little more chipmunky than that, but it was pretty close. <laughs> Isn't it's today his birthday? It's not how he sounds. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's my, now. Coming up. Yeah. But anyway, so so I'm there sorry, was Brad. supposed to be a whole I love you, Brad. Too. I did not mean to do that to you. I apologize. No, he'll love it. Brad loves any publicity. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> I sure do, Major. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's funnier if you're seeing the video. I, I don't think. Uh, the yeah, I would imagine uh, no. the audio version of this is causing a lot of unsubscribes right yeah, now. Right. Like what? Like what are they talking about? <laughs> Just for your, you know, you have I to imagine. I like the show before they got insane. You have to imagine right. Brad's head popping up like a little you know, furry <laughs> dog every time. So okay, back to Hololens, guys. Yes, Hololens. Okay. Hololens. Uh, the next Hololens, which we think is going to be late 2018 or maybe 2019, last we heard, is going to have this new coprocessor in it that can do um, AI on the chip. So this is, remember when Microsoft was talking about intelligent cloud, intelligent edge, put more processing power out at the edge for handling things like deep neural networks, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. This is what they're doing. They're, pu they're putting this processor on board. It's part of the silicon that they built themselves, the HPU, holograph mm -hmm. processing, holographic processing unit. And the idea is they're going to put more power out at the edge inside the HoloLens with these processors. And they did do a demo in Hawaii at a conference this week where they showed off, they said it was live working code um, that had this processor in it. So, so I, I will say this, uh, for this, I, I, I'm often not very complimentary to HoloLens, but there is an interesting trend occurring here, which is that, you know, we can debate whether Microsoft should make their own hardware. <coughs> Excuse me. And Microsoft, like Apple before it, has um, seized upon that notion to make great software. You have to make your own hardware. That kind of thing was Alan Kay, I think, invented that phrase, yeah. or at least popularized it. Um, but, you know, I, you know, making a phone or making a laptop or whatever, I mean, to me, that's, I, I don't know, I, I'm not really sure that's all that sophisticated. But there's something else going on here, right? This is Microsoft at least designing an AI coprocessor. It's a processor. Microsoft in the new Surface Pro designed a special bit of hardware that makes the pen perform better. Microsoft mm -hmm. has invented chipsets that go into its data centers in the cloud. Uh, yeah. That I don't will not even pretend to understand, but let's just all agree it's probably pretty sophisticated, whatever that is. And <laughs> field programmable gate array. I knew you were going to tell me what it was. Don't I just I don't want to lose any more childhood memories. So <laughs> just say FPGA. Those are that's yes. yeah. That's right. <laughs> anyway, the point of this is actually that puts the truth to that statement. In other words, to write great software, yeah. you have to make your own hardware. It doesn't have to be a device, although in this case it's part of a device, you know, like a traditional kind of device. But the, the 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 internal component stuff, you know, Apple does a lot of this. Apple invent, you know, has their own uh, not just processors, but other chipsets that they create oh, for their no, own products. Very I mean, much do, yeah. yeah this yeah. this becomes a key differentiator actually over time. Yeah. Um, and it, the more you see Microsoft doing this, and this is just one of you know only a handful that I can think of off the top of my head. I mean, I I, I actually see this as a, a fairly major future direction for the company. Yeah. Um, uh, the, that tandem of software and hardware, I mean, and and not mm. in necessarily consumer focused, recognizable devices like phones, but rather in these kinds of components uh, that make their software work better. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It's 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 yeah. this is very you know this isn't Microsoft making a mouse or whatever. Right. I mean, this is a very different kind yeah, of hardware no, product. No, this that takes some yeah. significant engineering. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's actually quite impressive. <laughs> Uh, and, it, yeah. and it, it bodes well for the future of HoloLens that they're spending that kind of uh, yeah. energy on it. Yeah, All right, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It's also a trickle-down effect, by the way, unlike the economy where uh, this stuff will, in fact, make its way to mixed reality headsets at some point, I would imagine. You know, we're, we see the innovations that occur in this kind of expensive premium product and uh, targeting niche, you know, vertical markets and so forth. Can eventually go mainstream, and that's another thing that Microsoft actually does really mm -hmm. well. Like we, I think we talked about that, and Inspire. You know this notion that it takes this complicated lab suit technology stuff that only a few people on Earth could even understand, and you you make it go mainstream. It takes a village mm -hmm. of people in bunny suits. To <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. sounds like an Intel ad, but sure, it does. <laughs> Uh, we don't have to break for, uh, for sponsors because they've all abandoned yep. us. So, uh, That's it's, uh, <laughs> it's time. Was it the Hall lens rant? Yeah, I think it might've been. They gonged yeah. Paul. No, no, they'll be back next week. <laughs> it's just a brief blip, an interim. <laughs> we used to do the show for free, Paul. You remember that? 12 years ago. 
My eyelid just twitched a little bit when you said that. <laughs> uh, it's time for the back of the book. The Therat will kick things off. Yeah, so... Go ahead, er Paul. Any time back. <laughs> um, every week, it seems, there's a new Xbox One S sale. Um, yeah, and this week's one. attempt... I'm, want, I'm waiting for the Scorpio. Yeah. I'm buying another I one. Know. Well, but you know, uh, Xbox One S is a good deal. Um, and if you buy a one terabyte console bundle, which is actually not the typical um, configuration, most of the bundles are 500 gigabyte bundles, but they have four one terabyte um, bundles for Forza Horizon, uh, Battlefield 1, Gears of War 4, and Halo Wars 2, um, each of which costs $349 and comes with some, you know, each of them comes with one or more games depending on the bundle. Um, you can get an additional game of your choice for free when you buy it from the Microsoft Store of one of a select number of retailers it could be any game i mean if you, you could buy the you know gears of war 4 bundle to get battlefield one which is a you know a tier one fairly new uh popular game so pretty good deal That's i mean like 60 again, bucks I, off basically yeah in effect yeah. yep you're yeah. gonna want a game you might as well get the one you want and yeah. that's cool by the way on a completely unrelated note i just saw a news flash uh, thing flash by chromebooks are going to start syncing sms notifications as well just so just like windows 10 huh. Uh, and then the app pick of the week is Kaspersky Free. They just announced this, huh. in fact, yesterday. Really? I'm surprised um, you're picking this. Okay. Yeah, I know. So well, so Kaspersky is controversial. Yes. For some. Um, and I believe <laughs> yes. it's controversial because it's Russian. No, um, there's more to it than that. Uh, in fact, I saw him on the news last night. They said, mm -hmm. uh, "Do you work for? The, are you spying for the Russian government? He said, no, yeah. I'm not. So, I, <laughs> so go ahead and get it. It's free. There you go. So um, I, I I look at the... I'm not. I'm not. I'm really not. I'm not. Well, okay. No. But when asked if uh, Windows has a, a backdoor for the NSA, Microsoft would likewise say, no, it does no, not. No, it does not. So, you know... Um, so you, what I are would you just, saying? Equal opportunity spying? I'm saying equal <laughs> opportunity alleging of spying. Yeah. I, we don't know. I And I. it, it really is true. We, <laughs> yeah. we just don't know. But I, that's... Dvorak I find it interesting, Kaspersky. though, is, it's, he always your reaction Kaspersky. to this is yeah. the same as a lot of people on Twitter, which is just instantly like they're Russian. And I, I, we feel like but, they're spying on But it's on more the than they're Russian. Kaspersky has yeah. been named in this stuff. Yeah. It's not. Well, I mean, I don't know what the mer what the merits of the <laughs> accusations are. Yeah. But I, I, right. I think that's the point. So <laughs> well, uh, here's what I'll you say. Here, here's the benefit here, of the doubt. Is that what you're saying? Here's why I'm recommending this. With the caveat that I will never install this on my own computer. Yeah, and the, um, and the U.S. government has already <laughs> said no Kaspersky for you. Yeah, well, uh, yes. So the reason is um, this is actually more highly rated than Defender, and Defender is the free software that comes built into Windows. Um, for me to install something on top of something that comes free with Windows, it can't just be as free. It has to be better markedly and one of the one of the ways in which you could make the case that this is better is just that it is more highly rated at finding removing detecting you know malware than windows defenders and so if you care about that kind of thing it's something to look at obviously um there are other free and paid av uh, solutions and the paid ones of course add additional services that some people see the value and i personally like to keep my computer as light as possible from a resource perspective but it is an option yeah. And Kaspersky is a very uh, good antivirus. Uh, you know, yeah. Dvorak's yeah. always recommended it. But there, there, you know, we it, it's not even really, I mean, there is strong evidence that they work with the, with the Russian government and the FSB. They've created software for them and so forth. So, okay. I don't, and, you, and Eugene Kaspersky <laughs> is... Oh, I should say, very I, strong I actually, I like Eugene Kaspersky Everybody likes him. Yeah, <laughs> and I, and I like he kind of reminds me of like uh, Jean Louis Gasset was like this back in the day, um, kind of plain spoken and outspoken, and not afraid to take on Microsoft. And I I look at his, when when I first saw and I, this happened twice. I think I mentioned this before, but when he first alleged that Microsoft was doing whatever they were doing in Windows 10 to keep his product down, I thought crazy per person yelling at clouds. I'm going to write about this and I'm going to have fun with it. And then I read what he wrote, and I said, actually, he makes, this is a really good point. <laughs> and you can look at Windows 10 the way it's designed. You can see that he's right. And in fact, you may recall, Microsoft came out and admitted that they were doing some of what he alleged they were doing. Right. 
um, fairly recently. So, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes the crazy person is right. That's all I'm saying. Right. Mm -hmm. And I use a Lenovo laptop and that could have Chinese government software on it and all that <laughs> stuff. So sure. Uh, right. I mean, well, that's the thing. I mean, in the current climate, when you think about a lot of the spying allegations that occurred between the United States and Europe, I mean, no one in the United States would ever question the fact that Microsoft, Apple, Google, whatever software was being used around the world. We would we would find it confusing that people right. would not right. want to use that mm -hmm. software because obviously those companies are collaborating with the U.S. government all the time. Um, and I don't know what to say to that. I mean, I don't I don't know. I'm not sure these things are are. The same or different? I, you know, I don't know. Right. Well, it's free. It's just it's, it's free. It's free. Yes. <laughs> it's free. What do you want? What do you want? Spying. Between You're giving friends. it away it's, now. You know, it's free. Did my webcam just blink? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like an eyeball behind it. Don't it. worry, Paul. We it's are, Eugene. Uh, we're taking Winking. good care of you. <laughs> you're, you're a good friend of us. Flood me, please. Sending you a gift. <laughs> Uh, Mary Jo Foley has the Enterprise Pick of the Week. Uh, today's Enterprise Pick of the Week is a new Azure service that was announced today called Azure Container Instances, or ACIs. Uh, the first iteration of these are in public preview now, and they're available on Linux first, Windows Server in the coming weeks. And what this is, is a simpler way to set up and deploy containers on Azure. Uh, right now, the way you do this is using Azure Container Service. That's that's one of the ways you can do this. And that's kind of a complicated way because you have to manage VMs um, and the underlying infrastructure. So Microsoft's idea is to raise this up a level and make it so that people won't have to fuss with the underlying infrastructure and they can just quickly set up a single container and the container will be, be billed per second. So if you only need a container for X number of minutes or seconds wow, or hours, cool. you're only billed for that amount of time. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's kind of, um, they, they say it's the first of this kind of a service that no one else does it. I don't know if that's true or not I, because I don't know for sure if there's anything like this on Amazon or a Google Cloud. Uh, but so I saw some people kind of saying this was an alternative to Kubernetes. It's not. Microsoft actually published today a connector for ACIs to connect ACI to Kubernetes. Mm. And they made it an open source connector. So if you want to do two things together, like put part of your workload um, in Kubernetes part and work with it in Kubernetes and then also work with ACI and kind of mix and match and go between the two. You can do that with this connector. So a lot, of, a lot of people are very excited about this and, and um, it'll be interesting to see how many people use this as the way they deploy containers on Azure. Nice. Yeah. Code name of the week. Codename of the week is Project Rome, which we've had as the codename before, but it's very fitting to make it this week's codename because Project Rome is actually the set of technologies that enables this handoff stuff that we were talking about at the beginning of the show. Ah. And um, so Microsoft introduced Project Rome back in 2016, I think, or maybe even before that. And it's a whole group of technologies that, were derived from Xbox Smart Glass, if you remember that, which debuted with Windows 8. Um, Microsoft took some of those technologies like the app-to-app -app cont uh, contract layer for applications and services and some of the APIs, and they built that out to be something developers can use if they want to enable handoffs in their apps. So if you use Project Roam with the Microsoft Graph API, you can do these kind of scenarios they're talking about, like pick up where you left off and timeline and all those things. So that's the code name for the week. Nice. I think, uh, Paul and Mary Jo, you've earned yourself a fine <laughs> craft brew. <laughs> so I picked today, a for the beer pick, a beer from the Bronx. Ah. Um, so if you're in New York and you want to try the, this brewery, they're very good. They're called Gun Hill Brewing. They're in the Bronx. And a lot of their beers can be found all over New York. I don't know how much further outside of New York they distribute. Uh, but they are making a bunch of beers that have at the end of the name soft serve. 
Um, my pick. <laughs> Just in time for the summer. <laughs> right. So this is this beer today that I'm picking is called Gun Hill Citra Sour Soft Serve. Oh, that's so funny. They call it a sour IPA, which is kind of an unusual name choice. I think I would just call it a sour beer. Uh, but what's interesting about this is they add lactose to the beer. And a lot of people are doing this now, especially with stouts. It gives the beer this really creamy flavor. It's not milk. Um, it's the sugar in milk. So, it's the sugar, yeah. right. And so when you have this beer, it tastes like pineapple sorbet. It's like, like you taste it and you're like, what is wow. this beer? It's amazing though. And mm. they make mosaic soft serve and they Sounds make really motueka good. soft serve. Yeah. It's really, really good. It's not high alcohol. It's like a really, really good beer for a hot summer day. It's there called Gun Hill Citra Sour Soft it's, Serve. It's been a while since I've had a sour, let alone, I guess, any beer. Yeah. But is it actually creamy? Because I'm not 100% sure I've no. ever had a creamy sour. It only tastes like very smooth and creamy, but it's not okay. creamy in consistency. Like when you see the gotcha. beer, it just looks like any beer. And then you taste it yep. and you're like, wow. Because <laughs> actually a creamy sour beer sounds, <laughs> sounds curiously like interesting curdle. to me. It's it's yeah. really good. It's very tasty. I'm, I like it a lot. I would call it pucker up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Sounds great. Mm. And perfect it's for nice. the summertime. It is. Very nice. My friends, you have completed another journey through the world, the mind <laughs> we, of such. And we Adela. almost did it, Brad, free. Well, so close. If Sorry, guys. Had reminded me, I might not have remembered Sorry. that all I have to do is push this little key right here. And the little dedicated Brad <laughs> Sam's button on his console for I some reason. I literally have a dedicated Brad <laughs> Sam's button. <laughs> Does it say Brad on the button? Just, no, it's, it's B, like though. a little picture of his face. I just press B uh, on the keyboard and it pops up. <laughs> B is for Brad. B is for that's Brad. That's going to be my children's book. B is for Brad. That's what I'm going to That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> Paul, you can find and Brad. Brad um, heard. Brad heard oh, that he I'm was sorry, being summoned on the show. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he Brad. said, I demand royalties now. Uh oh. <laughs> Say his name three times, he shows it's up. Like somebody stepped on his back or you yeah. can feel it oh, from afar. Oh. Yes. He is for Brad. Mary Jo Foley <laughs> is at all about Microsoft.com. That's her ZDNet blog. And Paul Thurot, of course, is at Thurot.com and T H U R R O T T dot com and at leanpub.com where you can find all of his books, including the field guide to Windows 10. And we shall return again next week, Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC, if you want to watch live. If you are here live, tune in uh, uh, the uh, chat room, irc.twit.tv. You can join in there and join the conversation. It's always a lot of fun in our, in our chat room <laughs> during the show. If you can't be here live, you can't. If you wanted to be in studio, we had the whole Syracuse family here. It's nice to have you all. They were very patient. Mm -hmm. Put up with a whole Brad Sam's thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were the victims here, they did not, not me. Storm out. I thought they might. Uh, you can email tickets at twit.tv. We'll put a chair out for you. Uh, we actually have a nice. Uh, we have some nice chairs now in the uh, office here. You can also uh, watch, of course, on demand after the fact. Uh, all of our shows are on the website, twit.tv slash WW for this. And, or subscribe. We're on YouTube. We're on every podcast client. Just search for Windows Weekly. And if you subscribe, you'll have an episode every Thursday morning for your drive-in. And that's nice. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mary Jo. See you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. <laughs>